What's up guys, my name is Dari and I hope that you have a wonderful day. I have walked you through a lot of front-end stuff by now, but the most important one is the usage of assets like JavaScript and CSS. So that's what I want to do in this video. By now, you guys know that Laravel is a PHP framework based on back-end coding, but it also has a series of components that we could use in order to generate front-end code. Laravel uses something which is called Mix. And Mix is a Webpack based front end build system which allows you to run stuff like Bobble, CSS, JavaScript, and much more. Now, inside our root directory, there's a file called Webpack Mix.js. So let's open it up. And this is basically a file that you could copy from project to project. Right now, we don't have that many files that we're compiling. But just keep in mind that there is an unimaginable number of configuration properties that you could use right here. Right here. You can see that we're linking our resources JavaScript directory to our public JavaScript folder. So we want to compile it from the left into the right. And the same thing happens for our post CSS too on the line below, right here. We need to have our app.css or scss inside our resources directory, forward slash CSS, forward slash app.css. And we want to compile it to our public directory, where is a folder called CSS. Instead of compiling CSS, we could also compile SCSS like I just said. And that's what I want to focus on right now, because the process is exactly the same. So what we need to do is to change our variable of post CSS to SAS. And let's change the path to resources forward slash SCSS forward slash app dot SCSS. All right. Now, how does the folder structure work? Well, the power of Mix is its directory structure. If you create a PHP project, you constantly need to decide where the source and compiled assets will be. With Mix, we could just stick to their convention and never think about it again. Now, if we take a look at that directory, you can see that every Laravel application has its own resources folder right here. So if we open it, you can see a CSS, JS, a Lang, and Views directory. Right now, we change our directory name from CSS to SCSS. So inside our resources directory, let's create a new folder called SCSS. And inside our SCSS, let's create a new file called app.scss. Let's save it. We're not ready to compile yet, but whenever we do, the files inside our resources directory will be exported into the public directory where there will be a CSS and JavaScript folder. Like I said before, Mix runs on Webpack. And in order to run Webpack, we need to set up a few tools. First things first, we need to have Node.js installed. And you might have it or you just don't know it anymore. So let's check it out. Let's hop to iTerm. And if you want to see if you have Node installed or not, you only need to run Node space dash V. So let's hit enter. Right now, I'm running on version 12.4.0. If you don't have it installed, you need to run brew install Node if you're on a Mac. If you're on Linux, you need to write down sudo space apt-get space install space dash y space node.js. Or if you're on a Windows, I will put a link in the description where you could download Node. And if you've done that, come back to your terminal and just write down node space dash v to see if it worked or not. Whenever you install Node, something called npm will come with it. And that's what we need in order to compile our assets. A good thing to remember is that you don't need to install Node for every project. If you install Node once, you can use it every single time. All right, what do we need to do next? Well, in our terminal, we need to run a command called npm install. Let's hit enter. And this might take a second because we're requiring all necessary packages. All right. Before we make it work, we need to perform one more command. Let's write down npm run dev to run our webpack once. So let's hit enter. This might take a second as well. When it's done, you need to run it one more time for it to work. And right now, you can see that we have compiled two files successfully. The first one is the CSS file, and the second one is our JavaScript file. We haven't done anything in particular to compile. So let's fix that first. So let's hop to our style sheet inside the resources directory and let's create a variable called primary color. 
and let's set the value equal to red. So let's say FF0000. Now let's style the body and let's set our background dash color equal to our variable. So let's say primary dash color again. What we need to do next is to hop to our front end, so our style sheet. So we need to link our style sheet. So let's go inside our layouts directory. Let's open app.blade.php. Let's get rid of the style that we have right here because we don't need it. Let's create a new link with the href to asset parentheses CSS forward slash app.css. And let's see where the file is. All right, let's open our public. You can see that we have a CSS directory right here that we didn't have before we compiled. Let's open it. And we have an app.css, which is empty right now, but won't be in a second. If we save it and hop to the front end, refresh it, nothing is happening. The background color has not been changed to red. Now, with the npm run dev command that we just performed, we're basically compiling it once. There's another command that I like to use, and that's npm run watch. So let's do that. Let's hit enter. All right, Laravel Mix compiled successfully. So let's go back to Google Chrome. Let's refresh the page. And you can see that our background is red. But if we hop back to our terminal, you can see that our NPM is still running. So if we remove the background color inside our Visual Studio Code, while our style sheet in the body, let's save it. You can see that Laravel Mix builds it automatically. Let's hop back to Google Chrome, refresh the page. And you can see that our background color is not red anymore. Let's hop to the project we've downloaded from my GitHub. And if you haven't, I have the link in the description where you could download the files. I will just go to my GitHub right in the browser. Let me open the repo. Let's open the style sheet. And let's just copy everything in the style sheet. All right, this takes a while. Okay, let's copy it. And let's place all of our CSS inside our app.css. All right, let's save it. And you can see that we're getting a Laravel mix error right now. So let's see what's going on right here. Let me go to iTerm. You can see that a module is not found because it can't resolve our image. I wanted to show you what will happen if you get an error message. So what we need to do is to change our path because we don't have our image directory. So let's hop to Visual Studio Code. Let's command F or control F. Let's write down background and let's search for the background image. All right, as you can see, we linked our storage directory. So if we open our storage directory, you can see an image dash banner, which is equal to the image that we need right here. But the folder name is different. So let's write down storage instead of image. But right now it will look in the public directory and that's not what we want. So we need to add a forward slash right in front of storage. Let's save it. And you can see that Laravel Mix has been built successfully. Now let's hop back to Google Chrome, refresh the browser, and you can see that our CSS has been compiled. All right, the last thing that I would like to show you is all of the front end presets that we could pull in. You don't need to do this because it will mess up what we just built. And we don't need to do it for now, but it's good to know that what we're going to do is easily done with Laravel. Most people like to work with React or Tailwind or Bootstrap. Instead of using the link tag inside your header, you can pull them in as a front-end preset from third-party presets in GitHub. And the commands are very easy. So let's hop to our terminal. Let's open a new tab. Let's go right inside of our desktop, so CD desktop workspace, first project. And the command that we need to perform is very easy. Let's write down PHP artisan preset percent followed with the framework that you would like to pull in. If you like React, write down React. If you like to work with Bootstrap, just write down Bootstrap. Now, what I'd like to do is to use Tailwind for now. What I want to do is to show you a GitHub repository that I prefer to use as well. So let's hop to Google Chrome. Let's go to a new tab and let's write down Laravel front end presets. All right, we need the first GitHub repository, so let's open it. And right here, you can see all the front end presets that we could use. What I want to do is to pull in Tailwind, so let's open it. 
And let's scroll down a little bit because right here you can see how we could use Tailwind. So first off, let's copy this command right here. Let's go to our iTerm. Let's paste it right here. Hit enter. And this might take a second, so no worries. All right. It has pulled in all Tailwind stuff that we need. But before we continue on, we need to run PHP Artisan UI Tailwind. Let's hit enter. Oh, excuse me, it's Tailwind CSS, my bad. Let's hit enter. This might take a second as well. All right. You can see that our Tailwind CSS scaffolding has been installed successfully, but please run another command. So we need to do the same exact thing as what we did with NPM. So we need to NPM run dev. So let's do that. This might take a second as well. And as you can see, our Laravel mix build has been done successfully. So what I want to do is to hop to Visual Studio Code. Let's open the app.css. As you can see right here, our entire app.css file has been filled in with Tailwind stuff that we could use. And honestly, Tailwind is not something that I want to focus on right now. But since CSS languages and frameworks are growing rapidly, I thought it'd be good to show you what it actually is and how you could easily pull it in. This was it for this video about compiling assets and CSS. If you do like my videos and you want to see more or you just want to support the channel, just click on the subscribe button down below so you don't miss out on any content.